So if we're going to go like back to kind of the characters, all right, we're only going for like six, seven minutes there. But um, if we're going to go back to like mutants and characters as well, I think that if you're going to have new mutants, it's an opportunity even to have some really cool cameos as well. Like even mm-hmm. if you remember in the first film, obviously you had um, Toad, which was the same actor who played Darth Maul, which is Ray Park. He's now a cult, uh, basically a cult figure now mm-hmm. in the movies and in Star Wars. So it'd be fun to have a little cameo as Toad. So they go, oh my God, this Ray Park, you know, I would love just little cameos like that. I think it's an opportunity to do things like this. But obviously we got a whole list of different characters. But um, even I came up with the actress called, I think she's called Simone Young. I think she, I, like, as I said this to Ben, she was in The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody who played like London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. as oh. Jubilee. But then again, it's very difficult to cast Jubilee. It is quite hard, we found out. Well, the thing is, because Jubilee, her origin itself is probably, she was the most pathetic mutant. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like she, she was only very, very useful on the 4th of July. <laughs> Halloween and maybe Christmas, Halloween, but at least New Year's Eve as well. Fourth of July. <laughs> so she basically is seasonal. God, it's almost like Calendar Man from Batman. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no mutant. <laughs> but, but the thing is, as well, she did appear in X Men Apocalypse, but she didn't even have her powers. She was just yeah. a random Asian chick in a yellow coat, which yeah, I that, think is that was it. Yeah, but. Let's say, for instance, that we do get Jubilee and she actually showcases her powers. Would you want her to be that version of Jubilee for a while before she becomes a vampire or have it like as a five minute stint of, oh, she was able to do this. Now she's a vampire. I would probably do the whole vampire thing after maybe maybe in the same film, possibly. I'm not sure. That's a tricky one. But I do want to show I would want to show both. Definitely. So you could easily have like two thirds of the movie where she's trying to be an X Man or whatever, and obviously not succeeding because her powers are a bit. She spot. I know. I know where the writer from Twilight got the inspiration for the sparkles now. Because yeah. Jubilee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, yeah, just, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Just, um, just please excuse me while I ram the smoky quartz into my skull. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it just it clicked for me that sparkliest of vampires. It... <laughs> oh, so for anybody uh, watching us, we do love to run and just sort of go off on tangent. It's all we by, ever do. By the way, any of you Twilight fans, I hate all of you. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I, I love you. Please don't hate me. <laughs> but um, yeah, since we're gonna like go off that, I do want to see a realistic version of Mystique. Yes, like <laughs> because but what what first first of all what was with the scales what was with the fishy scales or I don't scales? know like I couldn't grasp my head around it because I've never seen any design of her in the comics that she had scales she just had blue skin I mean we saw she had like white eyes like red hair a gun and mm. she had like kind of this weird like leather bustier thing on or and like a white dress at times yeah I mean. Mystique is probably going to be the easiest one to cast because I've said to you that when it comes to shapeshifters, it doesn't matter who plays them because it's a shapeshifter. Like at the end of the day, anybody can play them. Yeah, exactly. But But then again, I do want to see, like, because we had, like, see, we had Nightcrawler in number two and then he was gone. He was just gone. There was, yeah. He wasn't there anymore. Like, what but happened? The, but then he suddenly came back for X Men Apocalypse, but he was somehow the same age that he should have been at the end of the 90s, even though this was 1986. So technically, he'd only just be born. Because <laughs> the thing that really bugged me. We really is... have to fix the time. The time. We have to. Timeline. Fix the time. Timeline as a whole is the biggest issue with the mutants. But the other thing as well is the relationships, because there are a lot of kids within the mutant um, community that are offsprings of I mean, other mutants. Well, you got the Summers children, which are... That's an odd one, because they're like... Because they're not the kids of the exact 
Scott Summers and Jean Grey. They're like the cl the babies of the clones. Well, have I got that right? <laughs> Cable is the son of the clone of Jean Grey, which is Madeline Pryor, but the dad, which is obviously Scott Summers. Yes. Then you got. Uh, then you got their daughter, which I can never remember her name, but she is the actual daughter of Jean Grey and Scott. Right. I just... It's a very fudgy thing when it comes to the sort of whole Scott Summer and Jean Grey relationship, is that one minute they love each other, the next he cheats on her, because there is a moment where he cheats on her with Rogue, because Rogue tries to pretend to be Jean Grey. But the... But the worst bit, oh, right, right, is... right? I'm sorry, I've got loads of visions in my head of like the rogue from the first few films. Because I think he cheats on her with Rogue. I think he cheats on her with Emma Frost. But he, I think, when he cheats on her after Emma Frost, because obviously Emma Frost uses the whole like mind like thing, me Bob, to make it seem like she's Jean Grey. I think he says after like they sleep together, "Oh yeah, I knew it was you all along, but I still carried on." The what? <laughs> yeah, but like when we're talking about like the children of the mutants, without having very much Wolverine there, I do want to see. I would want to see, may, possibly, maybe later on, or maybe in this one, Dakin. I would love to see yes. Dakin, who is one of the Wolverine children, but also mm. another one who Hudson something. Jimmy Hudson. Jimmy Hudson. That's it. Yeah. So. That was the one we brought up in the last discussion, which I think would be the perfect version of um, Edgerton to play, because you could easily say, like, Wolverine did exist, and it'd be, like, you could... I mean, if they could use Wolverine, like, the original Wolverine's New Jackman as a brief cameo, all the more power to it. Well, but I think Edgerton I would be the perfect version for Jimmy Hudson, because... At least it gives you a whole new generation of Wolverine. Well, because if you, because well, like if you, um, if you just kind of explain this just very, just very quickly, um, for the, for everybody who doesn't know, how did like Jimmy Hudson come to being? So essentially, Jimmy Hudson was the biological son of Wolverine in the Ultimate Universe, where everybody that's a mutant has their X gene activated differently in terms that it all came down to the super soldier serum which obviously made captain america so, so jimmy hudson's mother jimmy hudson i can't remember who her mum is i'll have to do some research but essentially because of the fact that he wolverine was best friends with the guardian who is actually the canadian version of captain america he gives his son up for adoption to the hudsons which is how he yeah. ends up being in canada and he does have very similar powers to Wolverine, that he has the healing factor, he has the claws. But they, I don't know how they fully explain it, but he also has organic metal powers similar to Colossus. So his claws and his entire body can turn into organic adamantium. Right. Which would be quite an interesting concept... But at the same point, you then have another plot hole, which is trying or to explain is, is where adamantium... Well, where because adamantium the, comes from. Well, yeah, because the thing is, adamantium is... In the original movies, because, they said it was a meteorite. Yeah, like But in the comics... Metal. No, but in the comics, it was just an amalgamation of vibranium, steel... And one other element that just accidentally merged but, together, but and that's, that's it. I, that's that's where I got confused because mm. I thought like because um because vibranium is Captain America's shield, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. So, but then it's going to get into the whole thing about which metal's stronger and all that, which I can't be bothered to get into all that because that's just, yeah. just long. That's a long discussion, but um. I don't even know, but we could probably introduce one of the Wolverine kids. I'm not sure how you'd ever introduce them together, so I don't know if that's even a possibility. Well, for Dakin well, and Hudson. You could easily do it in such a way that they could be twins separated at birth. Right. But because of, like, maybe either Sabretooth takes the Dakin version, which is why he's more dark and twisted... 
that's how you end up with the sibling rivalry type idea for the movie. But then again, this, if we say if um, they did make the film, like make this film the way we want it made, right? So we mm -hmm. did the whole plot in the last video, and now we're doing the characters now. I know there's going to be there would be a few people that would go, "Where's X twenty three? Where's Laura?" Mm -hmm. I know there's going to be a few people that will ask that question. Yeah, I mean, Honey Badger. we've only seen like a very brief moment with her in the last Logan movie where. The other thing as well, I don't think they showcased her foot claw in the movie. They did, but they did it very briefly where she basically claws a guy's throat out with her foot. Yeah, but that's another thing that I think could be used a bit better. Because the thing that I always found bizarre is that the styling of how they designed her, at least when she was a teenager, is that she wore like boots, like sort of Doc Martin slash like army boots. She looked really cool, actually. Yeah, she did. But the thing that I've always wondered, does the boots have healing factors? Because if she goes through puddles, she's always going to have really soggy feet. Yeah, that's one thing that was never explained, was it? Yeah. But except, like, just to get this all cleared up now, I am pretty much dead cert on that. That's not his daughter. That's just basically Wolverine if he was a, a woman. woman, basically. But then... But then uh, there's been so many like Reddit conversations and like, arguments mm. about is that his daughter? Is that just the female version of himself? And it's just a rabbit hole which you won't find well, the you won't find a definitive answer for. Well, the thing is, he they I'm sure they have said in the comics many times that she is literally just a female version of him because yes. basically the only bit of his chromosome that they could get from his DNA was the XG uh, chromosome, which is what women are is XX, and us blokes are XY. So, yeah, at the end of the day, she is female Wolverine, but yes. I don't think they ever explained in the comics why her claws are so much more different than his if she is the clone. Like, no, it would take a lot of genetic engineering to try and rework things that's a bit like that intricate, yeah. It's just because obviously, because that's a clone, like, because mm -hmm. obviously, the bit which well, the bit which makes sense is Wolverine, yeah, mutants make sense, believe it or not. Yeah, you have um, like obviously, Wolverine is mutation with the bone claws at first, was they were in his hands, that's just how his mutation came to be. But mm -hmm. with Laura, you can't easily just explain the foot claw and just the two, you cannot easily explain that, no. But let's get back to like listing. Who to actually have as who? Yeah, go on. Um, now I, I'm trying to think of a very, I'm trying to think as a female actress for Dazzler. And ideally, I'm thinking someone that is a Disney actress. And oh, God, who was that annoying, like, really annoying woman that was in the high school musical movies that was like the main Ashley Tisdale? That's the one. The blonde one. Yes. Yeah, Ashley Tisdale, yeah. Yeah. I think she could work quite well as Dazzler. Do you reckon? Hmm. Because like with her experience being in high school musical, like she could easily again use the whole concept of being quite showy because that's the point of Dazzler is that her powers are used as distraction. But it's trying to find someone with enough pizzazz. Like, oh, look at me. I, I'm Dazzler. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be. we Like, as we were going through, all right, what is the most obscure characters we could probably think of? Like, the most craziest ones that we can think of. Ones that we maybe have seen, but maybe ones that have not even appeared in the movies or the comics. Or, well, well in the comics obviously but there is a few which will never ever make it into a film because it's going to upset a lot of snowflakes and i think it would upset marvel fans in general if you had characters such as if you don't know this character god bless you but the Jin genie <laughs> yes Jin genie i think is going to be the no that's just a no just a big no no <laughs> Mm -hmm. Basically, because she was in one issue of the comics and she had the power to create seismic waves. But the only way she could create those seismic waves was through drinking. So oh, basically, oh. the more the more she drank, the more powerful she got. <laughs> and then she ends up killing all of the like her teammates in the X-Men in the first issue. She got so drunk, she killed everybody and herself. 
Dan, that's basically Gingini. <laughs> I mean, the only way you could work her in is for Deadpool 3. Because <laughs> Deadpool... Can you imagine? Oh, I would love it. But I would oh, love to... No. But I could imagine the idea that she basically turns up in the bar. He, go, he literally just bitch slaps the drink away from her every time because he knows what will happen. Yeah, because she'll criticise me away. He'll so just like basically she... go, no, no, no. Disney says no. No, no, yeah. no. Disney says no. And then just like you'll see her, like you'll see her just like taking like a few shots. And just when she's about, just when she's about ready to throw up, you see Deadpool like, <gasps> no. <laughs> and you just don't see the bar just blow up. Yes. <laughs> Although that can only exist in Deadpool, but for yes. this. No, 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 no. But let's go back to the idea of like next gen version of mutants and their right. siblings. So the thing is with Magneto, it's, it's always been a bit of a debunked <sighs> issue with his kids, whether or not who is who isn't. But because still, but like Quicksilver is not his child, though. Well, in my opinion, I think they did. It's a weird thing they did they, in the comics a few years ago, where Scarlet Witch does a curse that's only supposed to affect her bloodline. Because she's so miffed off with Magneto, she tries to use it on him. But it doesn't work on him. It only works on Quicksilver. So, How does that work, then? But this is it. But then it's also like they... I think it wasn't long after that. They just went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, um, there was issues with the spell. He had like some sort of protection against it. So that's why it never worked. Yeah, but... The, but Although, I think the writers kind of screwed up and went, oh, no, oh, mm -hmm. crap, we've backed ourselves into an issue now. We can't get out of it. Now we've just got to basically BS our way out. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, in the Fox TV series of Mutants, which I can never remember what they called it because I never got a chance to watch it, they did showcase Polaris very briefly. She was in yes. it for... But at the same point, I did... <laughs> I wish they could have done a bit more than just go oh yeah this is just female magneto and that was it like it would be great to see her fight against scarlet witch because then you can bring in the whole concept of who is the legitimate daughter of magneto when they do reveal yes. who magneto is but because also, would you have the same actress for scarlet witch uh, well isn't she a twin Ke no she's not like mary Ke mary kate and ashley are the two twins, and she's the older sister. The so you could have at least, you could have one of the her little younger sisters be the Polaris. So at least they look similar enough. Yes, yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense actually. But then you can also make it easier. So because I don't know why they made it so Scarlet Witch is uh, what what nationality is that they done for the MCU? It's like some weird Russian type thing. They were Russian, yeah. But I don't know why they chose that. But you could easily just say, oh, the guy, whoever yeah, he is. And then gradually over time, like throughout the Avengers films, she gradually lost her accent. Yeah, lost her accent, as in, I can't put up with doing this accent anymore, is what it translates to. Um, <laughs> but you could easily say that whoever ends up being Magneto traveled to America, and that's how he ends up with getting a daughter called Polaris. So you don't have the same issue of the dodgy accent again. Yeah. But, excuse me, I'm trying to figure out whether they could ever bring back Quicksilver, because it did bug me that they killed him off so quick. I know, I know, yeah. Because at the end of the day, Quicksilver is quite an interesting X-Man, because he only stays loyal to his sister, because he likes to protect her. That's the point of him. Like, he... Yeah. But at the same point, it was just that he died too easily. <laughs> I know. But let's have a think. What else have we got in terms of... So um, yeah, so... The thing is with Psylocke, though, is that it's a bit of an iffy one because... she Originally, she was Japanese... And somehow along the way, Betty Brand, her body is destroyed and her mind goes inside the body of Psylocke. So she ends up basically overtaking Psylocke's body while retaining her own abilities and Psylocke's. 
The thing is, of course, for those of you who do not know, Betty Brand is also the sister to Captain Britain. And I think there was some hints a few months back, whether or not it is true, that they were working on the idea of Captain Britain. I hope which, they are, personally. So do I. Like, because the thing is, of course, now, is the fact that the majority of what we've had as Avengers have all pretty much buggered off. Like yeah, you've got, you, you can't do Cap, you can't do nope. Iron Man, you can't nope. do really do. We well, can't really do anybody apart from well, obviously you still got four. You That's can't it. really do Hulk anymore because no. unless you can, unless you have to explain the whole thing about being a scroll. Yes, we think he's a scroll. Um, mm -hmm. So, but then you know, it, there's it, very little. There's little you can do with those characters, so you've got to move on to something new. Yeah, and it help helps bring in the whole idea of a patriotic powerhouse to fill the void would be either captain britain or you got the patriot which would be in the winter soldier and falcon show like i can guarantee that in the next saga of the films that they are going to try and fill the void of the people that have disappeared because for the most part i think they're going to try and use spidey to fill in the iron man gap which to a degree i can understand but at the same point it's just gonna overtake the whole fact that spidey is his own thing yeah and also i just thought of something which i haven't thought about in the last video mm -hmm. you know um i can't remember it's i cannot remember its name and it's really bugging me that i can't remember its name but there's a group of mutants specifically just in canada which were tasked with, i think with capturing wolverine i cannot remember the name of the mutants though See the Canadian only... mutants. I cannot remember their name. I don't know. The only Canadian team that I know of in Canada is Alpha Flight. That's it. Is it? Right. Yeah, that's so... what I was thinking of. Because the thing is, Alpha Flight is also run by Captain Marvel in the latest comics. Yes. And it also has an interesting Hulk character called Sasquatch, which I would love to see. I know it sounds odd, but I would love to see a Canadian version of Hulk that's just literally a Sasquatch. <laughs> because yeah, it's just I like just... Hulk smash, eh? <laughs> well, I just thought of the perfect person to play a Sasquatch. Jim Carrey. <laughs> because, because the thing is, I think it was a few years ago when they were saying that Hugh Jackman is finally giving up the whole shtick of being oh, yeah, Wolverine. And Jim Carrey was going on Twitter with yes. like the forks and the knives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the way that he did his hair looks exactly like how Sasquatch looks in the comics, like when he's Sasquatch mode. Yeah. So, this it, it, Jim Carrey's not Canadian, is he? No, he's American. That's what I thought. But the thing is, he does do quite a lot of Canadian type roles. Well, Jim Carrey, he's a one of a he's one of a kind. Oh god, he's a one of the kind dude. But I think he could work as Sasquatch. Yeah. So yeah, we could have because I think there are supposed to be thinking of doing Alpha Flight within the Captain Marvel 2 movie, which would be another interesting twist to add to her character. Because I really just... I don't know why they had to make Captain Marvel as a prequel. It, it, if anything, I. it made things worse. Yes. Because it's all well and good saying, oh yeah, she was the first Avenger, that's why Fury came up with the name. But that's not true, because that's why Captain America is called the first Avenger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But at the same point, like, how can she be away from Earth for, what, 30 years? Well, what was she doing in that time? Well, okay, not 20 years, give or take, she was away from Earth. One, she would need to eat. Two, where the hell was she? Because they never yeah, explained what, that. Yeah, what was she doing in all that time? Was she just stargazing for all that time? What was going on? Well, all they said in Endgame was that there was other planets that needed her and they didn't always have an Avengers team. Right? But you yeah. do realise the fact that the rest of the universe has got more advanced tech than us, such as scroll technology, Cree technology, celestial technology. Like they even said, I think in Guardians that they take the mick out of Star Lord because he's only human. That yeah. puts in perspective how pitiful we are. But yeah, I mean, we've got like so many different mutants we could introduce. We got Risk, which is meant to be the 
she was what the daughter of Mystique and Wolverine, if I remember right. I believe so, yes. So again, it doesn't matter who that is because you'd have her mum's genes of shape shifting. But again, I'd say like for the next gen mutants, they all need to be early twenties. So you can get at least three or four movies out of them so they don't age up too quick. Yeah. Because that was the big issue I found with the original movies was that they were in the well, they were in like the mid twenties to early thirties when they started doing it, and they just aged up too quick. So by the time that it came to in the end, Xavier just looked knackered from just being in his chair all the time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Hugh Jackman did such a good job. Like at the end of the day, he did age very well gracefully throughout his films, and obviously there was elements of CGI too. Yeah, but obviously Hugh Jackman is just a glorious human being. <laughs> yeah, he is literally the Wolverine incarnate. But yeah. we got like other random characters like Omega Red. <sighs> because obviously he is meant to be white skinned and red bloodshot eyes. It's trying to work into an idea as to would we want him to look like that all the time? Or would it be just like it sort of wax and wanes? Because when we look at the Morlan trailer, not Morlan, Morbius. Why well, I keep calling him Morlan? It's not, it's Morbius. No, when we look that's at the, a completely different film. <laughs> yes. But when we look at the Morbius trailer, even though he's got the abilities throughout the majority of the trailer, you only see like a snicket bit where he looks like the Morbius we know in the comics. Yeah. And I'm assuming that's just down to budgetary reasons. So at the same point, it's trying to work in the idea of how to make Omega Red work without it draining on CGI. Because the one thing I found when I'm looking at the like 90s cartoon series of Omega Red, it kind of reminds me of like a Christmas version of Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see what I mean? Like it's like the oh, yeah, big totally. ponytail. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, the bright yeah, red yeah, yeah. suit, and it's the very pale skin. Oh yeah, it just, it's just Christmas kiss. Oh but, yeah, definitely. I mean, who can you imagine that can do a Russian accent decent enough, but still make it easy to understand them? That could play as a mo a moga red. Oh blimey, that is that is a doozy. That is a tough one. Mm hmm. Oh my goodness, that is that's hard. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've just had a I've just had a I've just had a brain fart or a brain wave, whatever mm. one. Um I did come up with I did come up with uh oh what is his name? This is gonna annoy the hell out of me. It will come back to me in a minute, but for uh, but for Omega Red, it's just just that kind of character is such a complicated role, but then again, mm -hmm. You could possibly introduce this character, which I think could work possibly maybe as a voice, you know, but only things you might disagree with me. But for the voice of Omega Red, I cannot remember his name, but do you remember Rorschach from Watchmen? Yes, yes, I know who you're on about. You, yeah, like just that voice. I can just like mm. picture, a, I can just picture Omega Red. Mm. No, I know what you mean. Uh, I can't remember the actor's name either, but... No, I can see where you're coming from with that because oh, it's quite a gruff. Or the actor who played Hellboy in the original Hellboy, Ron Perlman. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, we need to hear them sort of sound Russian because if it doesn't uh, sound, yeah, because it... otherwise it's like deter. It... Obviously, you gotta be careful with how you sort of cast different voices because of the world being so bonkers. It. It can be misinterpreted sometimes, but at the same point, you can't have every single character just be American because otherwise it's like, ah, shoot. Um, but then it's also trying to think of other random ideas such as Bishop. Now, Bishop is a freaking brilliant character. Just mm -hmm. like the short little bit that we got in um, in Days of Future Past was mm. amazing. Yes. And we only got him for like five minutes. <laughs> I mean, the actually, thing. Actually, funny enough, the funny enough, those X Men films have got a trend of doing that with characters. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no doubt about that. 
I mean, I said to you, had they have not already used him as Heimdall, I think Idris Elba would be quite a good choice for being. That's the only other actor I can imagine. Although, did you come up with... No, it wasn't Denzel Washington. Who was it? No. Who was it? Uh, what was his name? Oh, that's going to bug me now as well. <laughs> I can't remember his name because you came up with a suggestion. It, his face is in my head. What film was he in? If you can try and think of what film he's been in. It'll come back to me in a minute. But also, we had, yeah, we had Bishop. We had um, some random characters, Sunspot. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think of like other ethnic characters as well. So, say for Forge, because that's another black man character. Um, Denzel Washington could work as the Forge to a degree. Yeah. If you see what I mean, like if you to bulk up a little bit, or if you you could have Dwayne the Rock Johnson as Forge because Forge is meant to be quite a big guy. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see but the that. only issue is like I don't know whether to have it so Forge has no hair because the thing is with Forge, he's meant to have long hair, doesn't he? Yes, yeah, he, yeah, he does, doesn't he? Because he has like the headband as well. Yes, but I don't know if that would work with The Rock because The Rock looks better without hair. Like, I've seen him with hair and it and looks, looks just, it looks weird. It looks like, like he's wearing a toupee. Do you remember in Scorpion King? Like, it just, yes. any film where he has hair, you just go, that's a wig, that's a wig, oh, that's a wig. It just, it, just, it, I think it's because we've, I mean, even in his wrestling career when he actually had hair, it just it, doesn't look, it still looks weird. Even it, though it it is, just, that is natural hair. Yeah, it just looks too bizarre. I mean, what else have we got? I mean, I've just had a very odd idea for Darwin, but I'm sure you think, why the hell have I thought of him? Vin Diesel. Just because he's already got no hair, he looks quite easy to, like, shift oh, into the yeah. idea of being able to be flexible. The whole point of Darwin, folks, is the fact that he adapts to his surroundings. To uh, anything. So yes. basically, if you think about it, why the hell did he die in first class? Yes. <laughs> but the thing is, did you ever see the Riddick movies? I did, yes. He was so good in that for fighting. Like I know he's done Fast and the Furious, but for me, the fact that he did so well as a sci-fi character and he doesn't come across as a sci-fi guy... It could kind of work as even when you Darwin. saw him in uh, what was it? What was he in? I think it was called Witcher when he was playing. The yes, movie. and he was actually all right in that. Oh movie. God, that's but a glorious movie. The bit that it, the bit that the last me, witch hunter. The bit that annoys me about Vin Diesel though is that he seems like he plays the same again, the mm. same character in every film. It's just he doesn't change. I mean, that's the only issue is that he always seems like a miffed off thug that's literally got too much shit to deal with pardon me french but yes. to be fair it could kind of work because i mean if you had the ability to always adapt to every situation surely you'd be fed up of always being the front man in line to try and be like the front man in every battle because that would be the only upside to having darwin is that you let him go first and then you'd all follow behind Yes, for sure. I mean, like if you like, if we go back to first class, let me see. We had Darwin. We had the brother of we had the brother of Cyclops. But yeah, you had we, Havoc. Yeah, Havoc, and obviously we had Beast. But Beast is I'm one of the original X Men. But who else? Mm -hmm. uh, who else did we have? We had, we had... Pixie. Was she in? Yes, yeah, she. Yes, yeah, she was in first class. Yeah. We um... had Pixie. Uh, oh, what was the guy that had the screaming ability that flew? It was... Oh. Oh, I can't remember his name for the life of me. Banshee. Banshee, yes. So... See, they killed him off way too quick. That was what really bugged me. The thing is, I love First Class because they showed like the early I, on... I personally thought First Class was brilliant. I loved it. But they killed off too many mutants too quick... Yeah. So then they just had to bring in like the original ones, but they were too young to be the original ones in the next movie. Yeah, because like you just had to fill the void. Hmm. But I would like to see Banshee done again, but it's again trying to figure. 
trying to find the right person to play him because I, I mean I don't even know if he's supposed to be Ginger because the actor they had was Ginger if I'm correct yes so if the character is meant to be Ginger you could have Rupert Grint Rupert Grint actually kind of does look like that character to be mm -hmm. honest yeah and plus Rupert so, Grint he's not really he hasn't really done much in the last no. few years well, has he no, because I think the last thing he did was he was in a BBC drama with... Uh, oh, she was a very well-known uh, posh actress. He, he did Harry Potter. He did that. Yeah. And then he did a music video of Fred Sheeran. And then he kind of semi-retired after yeah, that. Yeah. The thing that I love about Rupert Grint is that with all the money he made from Harry Potter, he put most of it away. And then he bought himself an ice cream van and went around the country to sell ice cream yeah, to kids. Yeah, because that was actually one of his dream jobs. Yeah, I thought, you but, know what? <laughs> and I just thought, you know, you're a multi-millionaire, but fair play to you, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, what else have we got in terms of, like, characters? We got... Um... I mean, let's say we were to cast some of the, like, mutants we've seen many a times, like Beast... The guy that we had in first class was an interesting concept because he was only well known for a very Scrubs. odd. Was it Scrubs? No, he was on a. Um, he was a British TV series. Skins. Yes, Skins, and he did do a decent job as Beast. Don't get me wrong, but I think we need to find someone that's got a bit more muscle mass because the whole point of Beast is that he's quite a bulky guy. Yeah, yeah, part, yeah. Because like we're gonna have to have like that, and not uh, Frasier from Channel Four. I mean, to be fair, I still find it weird that it is Cassie that guy. Butler. Yeah, because the makeup on it that was glorious. Yeah, because I mean, in, uh, in the on the DVD, yes, the days of DVDs. Like, mm -hmm. my God, we're gonna make ourselves sound old, and I'm only twenty four, and you're like twenty eight. <laughs> but uh, oh, don't rub it. But in. like taking the DVDs, I still remember on the extras disc watching how they applied the makeup and everything, and it is mm. just—it's it, incredible. It's bloody amazing. If you I find mean, it on YouTube, guys, you have to go watch the Beast makeup. The only thing I will say about the style for Beast is that. The way they did his hair kind of reminds me of the main style for Mufasa in Lion King because it like curls in the middle. <laughs> oh, but yeah, in the yeah, cartoon he, series, it's meant yeah, to be like yeah, he had like the Wolverine syndrome. Yes, <laughs> but he had like gravity flying <laughs> hair for some reason. I just think they all just had perms that went wrong. Yeah, they all had perms because like, <laughs> ooh, like interesting little side note is that when Hugh Jackman was doing his audition for Wolverine, so it was meant to be Do Gray Scott or Russell Crowe, who was meant to be the original Wolverine, and Hugh Jackman was basically an afterthought. He was only brought in because there was nobody left to basically play him. Mm. And so when he was doing that, he was auditioning for uh, a play called Oklahoma, and he was playing a character called Curly, who had a massive pun. And he mm. had to do that whole audition just in a baseball cap. And basically, what you see in the film is like him trying to get rid of the perm, and mm. so that's why his hair looks the way way it does. And he had to bulk up super quick to do that film. So yes. all these shirtless scenes, they had to push to the back to the like the very end of the film, just so mm. he had time to work out. And he was working mm. out like two, three times a day. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, could you? Who... Would you have Sabretooth in this? Well, I mean. <sighs> Sabretooth is a bit of an iffy one. In I mean, the the first Sabretooth we got never had any lines. I find that the most bizarre thing of all, all they did was growl and snarl at someone. I don't and, even know who and, played him. And it wasn't and it wasn't the later Liev Schreiber. No, it was some other completely different actor. So I I mean, it was such a bizarre thing because. They never even hinted at the idea that they were half brothers until they did Wolverine Origins. Because we, yeah, because we came up with like the theory of trying, like, as everybody was going, why don't they recognize each other in like number one? You know, everybody was complaining about why they didn't recognize each other. And we came up with like the theory that because like Wolverine had his DNA and like everything tampered with and he had the adamantine put in him, and obviously he has a very slow aging. And mm -hmm. so we, and so there's kind of a little bit of a feud that the adamantium, the whole Weapon X process, actually made his 
aging process so much slower because he has such a rapid healing factor. But there is a, I think it's a comic that shows what would have happened if he didn't have the adamantium. And yes. he ends up turning into like this feral creature. Yes, but so he has he, no nose. Yes, yeah, so basically... <laughs> The reason why is that, like, Saber Tooth was becoming like more and more feral, more animal than man, which mm -hmm. is basically on because like that could have been the reason why he didn't recognize Wolverine. And also, don't forget, Wolverine basically got shot in the head and he has no memory. So that's I mean, that's a theory on why they don't recognize each other. I mean, to a degree, you could bring in Saber Tooth as the reason why both Dakin and Jimmy Hudson were split up because they were being hunted down by Sabretooth because Sabretooth was trying to either kill off Wolverine and his bloodline or something along those lines. But you don't have to make him a main bad guy because unless you have the first Wolverine, he's not really that relevant, if that makes sense. No. But the other thing as well is we... I'd love to see Kitty Pride, but I'd like to see more to her abilities because they've recently. Oh, yeah. I well, I said to you the other day, and they've recently done it in the comics. If her ability is that she can shift her density to be able to phase through things, then she should be able to do the opposite and make her more solid, which she's recently just done in the comics. Right, so but, that's actually being fun. She can do that. Yeah, so she can do more than just phasing. She right, can make okay. herself more dense, which is a decent power to have when you go against things such as uh, the Juggernaut, for instance. But who can we have that be the right sort of age to be Kitty Pride? Because the original actress was Ellen Page, correct? Yes. She's gone on to do quite a lot of things. She's in the Umbrella Academy. She's done oh, loads she's of different. Done a lot, actually. Yes, but at the same point, like I don't think she's the right sort of age now to be Kitty Pride again. No. So I'm trying to think of perhaps anybody that could be young enough to play it. And I mean, in my opinion, if she could work. She's a great actress, but if she can try and learn to do a decent American accent, because I've never seen her do one, Emma Watson. Uh, I can, I yeah, can yeah. see that. Yeah. It's a bit of a tough one, but yeah, I can see where you're going. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, this is us just spitballing. We've got like quite a few different characters that we haven't really mentioned we, yet. We, we might have to do a part three. <laughs> but this is it. I mean, at the end of the day, we've been here over an hour spitballing still, it's ideas. Better to have a lot, it's better to have a lot of ideas than very few ideas. But, yeah, I mean, until we get any confirmation, which probably won't be till next year due to... The pandemic and obviously the worldwide situation that's happening... Yeah. I'm just waiting for zombies. Like this is the with the way this year has been going, I'm just expecting zombies around the corner. Be, to be honest, zombies would be welcomed because I've had enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. Haven't we all? But <laughs> is there anything else you want to add to this today, dude? No, but I'm afraid everybody, because we've not even really touched base on half of the characters yet, which may mean a part. I'm spy. <laughs> yeah. At, at the end of the day, right, that's it. Yeah. At the end of the day, we are just two dudes that like to rant, rave, and ramble about everything, oh, yes. and go from there. So, thanks again for joining us. I'll be editing as usual, and if you have any suggestions, please drop them in the comments down below. We do appreciate any feedback because we are still learning, we're still growing, and we're still trying to comprehend what we're doing. Yeah, so and hopefully over time, if we can maybe bash out a few more live streams a week, maybe we could even maybe possibly do one midweek, if, yeah. like, if possible, maybe. It just depends, but Sunday's our regular streaming day, uh, around 6 o'clock, 6 yeah. thirty, which yeah, is... Yeah, 6 p.m. Uh, GMT. Is pretty, which is British, yeah, British Standard Time. So yeah. that's going to be like right about time for 6 o'clock. Um, obviously, you can work that into your iPhones, obviously, because we have the worldwide clock now, which is on our iPhone, so you can easily see when it's a, when we're available in your country, wherever you are. So, thank you so much for watching. This has been Spitball. I've actually quite enjoyed this one. Uh, mm -hmm. As always, if you have any suggestions, if you have any ideas for any characters, any plot points, anything, 
we are going to be wanting to hear it so please pop it down in the comments and we'll be sure to mention it in the next video later on which will be next sunday yeah so stay safe everybody and we'll catch you all soon see you later